My name is Kent Swanson. I'm the public art project coordinator with Bernalillo County. Um, and our schedule for today, we're going to just have a quick review of etiquette and housekeeping. We'll review the project uh, for the benefit of folks that are, um, if, if it's, you know, the, we've got a few guests here from the public. So we'll go over a little bit of, about the history of the project and the goals for the project. Um, and then we will jump in with um, Joel's presentation at 9.15. Uh, presentations are scheduled to last half an hour. The artists uh, don't necessarily have to take that full chunk of time. So if we do in a little bit early, we'll have a, a bit of a break before our next presentation. But um, yeah, there, there'll be uh, cool. that half an hour presentation time, 15 minute question and answer period. Um, and then we'll jump on to the next presentation at 10 o'clock with Margarita Paz Pedro and Alma. Though there's a scheduled break at 10.45 to 11. And then our final presentation, Kyle Erickson at 11 to 11.45. Um, if the panelists, uh, we have a scheduled lunch break. So if the panelists want to um, go ahead and take that full time, um, that's great. We can resume discussion with the panelists from 12.30 to 1. Um, we'll also have the option if, if the panelists are okay with it, we can plow on and finish up a little early. Just kind of depends on how folks are feeling. So that's the rough schedule for the day. Uh, in terms of how the webinar and the presentations will be managed, we'd like for the panelists to remain muted during the presentations. You know, just everybody is familiar with the, the traffic noise or a barking dog in the background and whatnot so that um, we can give the presenters our full attention if, if uh, you'd kindly remain muted during the presentation unless uh, a question comes up, um, then you can unmute, you can raise your hand, unmute, and then address the, the presenter or address me as I'll be moderating. Um, we have two different roles for the folks attending today. Panelists are the original selection committee members for the project, um, arts board members who are in attendance, and any county commissioners who are in attendance. Um, I actually don't believe we have any county commissioners um, on at the moment or we have looks like um, three guests. So guests are any members of the public uh, who are attending today. Um, you are muted um, just by default. Uh, and then after each presentation, we'll, uh, uh, as a moderator for the presentations, I'll unmute you. And then you'll have an opportunity to ask questions after each presentations after each presentation, but the, the panelists are set up a little bit differently so that um, they can ask questions or address the artists during their presentation. Um, but we do ask a panelist to go ahead and raise your hand and, and be addressed and, and then unmute so that uh, we have a smooth flow to the presentations today. So let's see, any questions about the protocol and etiquette before we yep. proceed? Seems straightforward. All right, great. So um, just in review of the project, the South Valley Pool is located on Isleta South <clears throat> Rio Bravo in the South Valley community. And the project budget for the mosaic is $35,000. The county public art program is requesting that the mosaic be made of durable materials that will withstand our desert conditions and also um, possibly be in contact with water. Um, we request that the materials have a structural lifetime of at least 25 years. Um, Mosaic is intended to have a design and concept that connects to the traditions and landscapes of the South Valley. And there it was a request in the 
call for arts for uh, community engagement elements. So involving the community in some way in the creation or design of the, the mosaic. Uh, in review of the mosaic <coughs> location, we looked at a couple different sites, um, namely the outside building entrance facade and the selection committee also thought the this wall that was separate that separates the splash pad and the pool itself would be an interesting feature um, for a mosaic as well so the artists were invited to consider um, both or one of these uh, locations for their proposals so as an option to kind of be creative and and look at the different sites um roughly the exterior wall this is kind of what it looks like in terms of the dimensions uh there's about 697 square feet on the outside that excludes this door space and this these are panels above the the actual wall so the the physical space of the exterior wall that's broken up into a couple of photos here is uh, again about not quite 700 square feet. And this space here, the wall separating the splash pad and the pool is about 114 square feet on that one side. Um, and let me see. <coughs> All right, and the project goals are to create a landmark public artwork that recognizes the cultures and communities of the South Valley to engage the community in the creation of the artwork and to provide a welcoming environment to users of the South Valley pool. In terms of the aesthetics, we also, the selection committee also um, put a, a request that the mural be culturally sensitive and consider the diverse cultures and landscapes of the South Valley. And also to consider the colors and designs of the spray park and splash pad, as well as the nearby Oriente del Valle mural, um, which you can see part of in the background. And again, these are the colors of the splash pad uh, and spray park features. So artists were asked to consider that in their design just with the aesthetics and coloration. Um, a little bit of discussion on the process. At this point, the uh, committee members that are present today, I'll be sending you an online form uh, via email shortly. Um, this has a rubric and, and a review process that you'll uh, go through after the presentations. Um, that will give us a preliminary score for discussion purposes um, at the end of the three presentations. Um, folks who are not able to attend from the committee today um, will also get this scoring sheet. And as we are recording the presentations and we'll be posting them uh, online so that um, this, all the selection committee members can uh, participate in the, in the review of the presentations, since I know it's a, a tricky thing to get everybody in the, in the same room, virtual or live all at the same time, that's that's how we'll do it. We'll do a, um, that scoring, um, the initial scoring um, at the end of the presentations, we'll discuss before we break. And then um, the selection committee members uh, from the project will be, I'll, you're invited to attend um, the arts board meeting this Monday uh, and the committee, if the committee today uh, at the end of the presentations could um, select a representative to present the uh, present to the arts board this coming Monday. Um, that way we can have an initial conversation about the results. Um, what we'll actually be doing as well is um, we've had some feedback over the past few years that um, in terms of the public art process and projects, public comment um, should become more of a, uh, an aspect of the, 
the process. So we will have a period of public comment and we have uh, kind of refined the process so that um, public comment will be scored and weighted. Uh, and I can go over that um, after the presentations with folks. Um, so once we uh, see the presentations, do the initial scoring, um, we again will have more of a conversation with just the committee members here that are um, present today about the next steps and how that public comment will figure in to it. But just so folks know, um, we're going to edit the recorded video into three pieces, put out a, a blurb on our website and social media so that we allow time for the public to chime in and, and give their feedback about these um, proposals. So um, with that said, that's kind of my uh, review of the etiquette, the process, and the project background. So let me see. It looks like we are right at 9.15, which is showtime for Joel. So I'd like to introduce Joel Davis, one of the finalists for the project. And um, welcome, and thank you so much for taking your time and energy to uh, make this uh, proposal and, and design. And we're excited to have you here today. And uh, without further ado, if you'd like to jump in and um, yeah, and then we'll troubleshoot any technical things that happen, knock on wood. <laughs> cool. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Joel Davis. and. Um, yeah, I'm just excited to be a part of this process. I've tried a bunch of public art uh, proposals in the past, but I don't think I was ready enough with the procedural elements. So uh, I'm just excited. I've already learned so much on this process. So it's already a win in my opinion. So uh, I appreciate you guys allowing me this opportunity. And um, do you want me to just go into sort of my breakdown of my ideas and then show my my designs, I suppose. Kent, is that kind of the format you want me to follow? That would be great. Yeah, just to um, kind of go through the <laughs> your steps and process and share your design. Yeah. And then, uh, again, uh, panelists, yeah. if, if you do have questions during the, the um, presentations, feel free to raise your hand and then ask those of Joel and then we'll have more of a time for discussion at the end of the presentation. So yeah, yeah, jump on cool. in. Um, yeah, so thanks, Kent. Um, I've been doing tile work and construction with a predominant focus on tile for 16 or 17 years. I've been professionally doing tile installations for about a decade. And um, my process, and I, I broke it down, I sent you an email. But um, the first thing I'll do is establish with a structural engineer, if the substrate can take the weight that I apply to it. Um, secondly, I will see if I need to put a multi bonding primer on the substrate on the front facade of the building to ensure a proper bond. Um, a lot of the design elements that um, I don't know if you guys can see my large. Um, my first rendition, it should be on your guys' screen. Um, I'll, I'll describe the concept after I break down kind of my um, process. Um, I, I'm going to treat this as if it were a installation in someone's house in the sense that um, it'll be a lifetime installation. Um, I, uh, I have a difference. Well, I, I, this is a, a comment. I really appreciate that um, Alma, myself, and Kyle, we have super distinct different styles and techniques. Um, I think Alma does a bisque fired ceramic that's painted, which I love. Kyle does this tedious glass stuff from what I've seen. I tend to do more like bigger cut shapes of porcelain and stone and more construction grade materials. Um, it's just what I've sort of learned and developed um, over the decade plus of cutting tile and mandalas and um, figurative work and stuff like that. Um, 
most of my designs I'm going to cut off site. I'm going to rent a specific um, warehouse space because it's uh, it's very it's very loud. It's very wet. So I plan on doing most of the designs off site. Um, let's see. I will establish the layout with laser levels and and drawings and projections before I start to fabricate everything. Um, and when I'm adhering the mosaics, I um, I adhere to the ANSC um, protocols, which is the Tile um, Association of America, in regards to the type of thin set used. Um, the temperatures have to be specific. There's a lot of variables, I think, going on with um, exterior tile applications. I feel like, um, well, I know that my exterior tile applications in the past are um, freeze and thaw resistant. Um, I provide for expansion and contraction with, with some of the materials. I think I'm, I just shared a uh, kind of an example of one of my previous um, tile pieces at uh, Tortuga Gallery. I think this is eight feet by seven feet. Um, I've tiled spaces this big, um, as big as the mosaic site numerous times. I've just never done such a tedious rendition with the porcelain and the stone. Um, and that's exciting. Um, I obviously use uh, latex modified thin set mortar, which is the high set um, commercial grade installation products with the grouting, with the, all the materials. I tend to use, um, instead of like glass or a bisque fired horse, uh, uh, ceramic, I use porcelain and stone, which is super dense. And um, you could barely even scratch the porcelain. So I took that into consideration, I feel. Um, I mean, I could go into the, the more technical stuff if need be, but um, I basically am treating it like it's a, not treating it, but it's like, you know, in a client's house, I have to guarantee the workmanship for 20 to 30 years anyway. So I'm super comfortable with that element of it. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, basically most of the, the stuff I'll cut off site and then I'll adhere it, you know, the mandalas and the suns and the animal motifs and features. And then I'll do the background, probably half on site, half off site, um, depending on um, temperatures. And also um, noise is a consideration that I was just pondering the last few days um, because cutting, cutting tile in my process is pretty noisy. So I'd have to consider the neighborhood and the library in that sense. Um, I have a friend who said he could fabricate me like a, like a noise dampening structure if I'm cutting a bunch on site, but I'm probably gonna do most of it off site and then install it in phases. Um, starting left to right is how I, I kind of envision the process. Um, obviously, I'll tarp off and prep everything every day because we don't want to get the concrete stained or, um, you know, it'll be very tedious. It's, it's, it is a high-end construction job, but it's an art job. And I feel like I'm really good at melding those two um, sort of distinct schools of thought. I'm able to kind of navigate both of them. So, um in regards to durability and execution, I feel really confident about it. Um, like I said, I've done big mosaics before, but this will obviously be the biggest to date, and that's that's exciting. So, um, and I sent a, I sent some emails to Kent and the other board members, I believe, um, describing the technical elements of of tile setting on this scale. Um, let's see. Yes, so um, I could talk a little bit about the impact and the, the quality, of course, I'm confident with. The theme is predominantly just nature in the area. Um, I went to Adobe Acres Elementary right there, and then I went to Harrison, and then later Rio Grande. So I've been in the area my whole life. Um, I moved to Denver, and then I came back here, and I was like, I'll never leave. It's definitely um, where my roots are. So 
and I'm currently living right next to the mosaic site, which is intriguing to me too. It's kind of serendipitous. Um, I have a couple, I'll, I'll bring up my, my, my drawings in a second, but I have um, a lot of animal stuff and sort of representational versions of the sun and the moon. Um, half the mosaic is going to be a, sort of a morning scene going slowly into a evening scene. Let me bring that up right here. Um, left wall. So yeah, this is, um, and admittedly the plants are just kind of placeholders. Um, I was having some Adobe Photoshop issues with this, but there's gonna be a rendition of a mandala and a mesa scape in the background. And I chose to incorporate Sandhill Cranes because they've always pursued that little corridor of the bosque. Um, and where I live now, there's actually a bunch of them. So I interact with them fairly frequently. Um, and then the, the background of the tile is gonna slowly go from sort of morning to dusk progressively. And um, the element, I, I'm, I'm not a hundred on this, but I'm, I thought I chose to use um, a rendition of Sonny Rivera's um, iconic sculpture of the kids on the burro, um, but they're gonna be wearing like swim gear, like goggles and um, various, um, I wonder if I could, hold on, let's see if I could bring that up a little closer. So I'm gonna interject a little bit of playfulness into it, because I feel like some of my works, it just doesn't read as humorous, but I think I could have the kids wearing like, swim accoutrement perhaps um i guess i should have talked i don't even know if sonny's around anymore he was a friend of my father's but um so that that's basically the the breakdown of the one side and um let's see let me bring up right uh, wall. Uh, oh okay so this is the right wall and it's um again the plants are placeholders so i want to have them more sporadic and these are plants that bloom at night we have some, again, Sandhill Cranes, a Mesa Scape, um, which is a bit stylized. It's not like a rendition of the, our West Mesa, but it's stylized for the sake of the motif um, with sort of a moon abstraction in the corner, a coyote, you know, roadrunners, just animals that I interacted with as a kid. Um, I wasn't sure about the door. Um, if I get this job, I, I might talk to a muralist or somehow paint the door to not be this like definitive break. Um, I had an idea of making the door be like a portal, but it felt like it was maybe interjecting too many concepts in one space. Cause I'm hoping to fill the entire space with tile, like the gradation of orange to dark blue will be all mosaic background. Um, Let's see, what else can I say about this? Um, yeah, the splash pad, um, and this is where I'm hoping to potentially engage kids. I'm talking to work in classroom and I'm gonna meet with um, arts people at Adobe Acres and maybe Harrison Middle School and see if the kids would have any interest in maybe hand making the tiles and it's, it's it's a large space and it, it's sort of just an abstraction, but it's actually like a serpent. Um, and I'm gonna make the colors whimsical and playful just for the sake of you know, it being a snake. But this is kind of what I came up with. Is this, did that, that come up on your guys' screen? Yeah, okay. So that's kind of, and, and that's, that's just a secondary idea. Honestly, I feel like the main focus obviously is the big wall um yeah let's see what else i could talk about um yeah i have a breakdown i sent you a breakdown of the budget um let's see if i could find that real quick and i just from my construction experience i um let's see yeah this is kind of a breakdown of how much the materials would cost roughly. And um, I just kind of shot from the hip initially and I came in within a thousand dollars of my estimation because I've done 
thousands of square feet of tile in the past. So I kind of applied some of my construction knowledge to that, obviously. Um, and I brought up in my initial proposal, um, if and when I do hire people to help me with elements of the installation and the grouting, I think that would be a good way to, to engage some people too. Oh. I wanna pay people who are only residents in the South Valley to help with this installation. If, if I could find people that are interested in tile setting. Um, uh, I'm, hoping that, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm not sure what that is. Um, let's see. And I, I think in my head, I'll, I mean, it'd be easy to make the May 22nd, I believe, opening. I think I could knock this out in three months um, of constant cutting, like make a portion, install it, make a portion, install it. Um, in my mind, I think it'd be about a three month process. And um, if, if I proceed to do this job, I'm basically canceling all my construction jobs and all my other art shows. I have a sculpture show next year. I'm going to put all of it off until this is complete. So this will be my, obviously my predominant focus. Um, say that again. Yeah. So, um, and it'll go in phases. I think the first thing I'll do is a warm up is the big mandala sun. And um, I sent some references. I guess I should have brought more references for the people that are just joining us today of my previous stuff, but, um, Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I feel fun about it. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be a, an epic scale of work, but it's uh, not intimidating at all. Um, and yeah, and I'm excited to see what Kyle or Alma does because they're uh, two of my favorite artists, honestly, as well, which is serendipitous and interesting. Um, excuse me, let's see. Um, what else can I talk about? Yeah, does anyone have any questions so far? I feel like I kind of just dumped a lot of information there. I actually have a question. I know that you have okay. a three month um, time frame that you've stated. Have you also factored in um, weather? You know, as if we do happen to get any, I mean, I know we're right now, we're very lucky that we have, you know, um, dry weather right now and we don't have any moisture, but you know, for for the fact that if we were to get set in moisture, you know, would that play a factor into your time frame? Oh yeah, um, definitely. I think that it's 52 degrees Fahrenheit is the coldest you want to actually install tile. Um, that's a that's a definite factor. And um, if that happens, obviously, I, I'm, the three month thing might be extended. But during that period, I could still be fabricating all of the key elements in my studio. Um, so I'll, I'll still be making stuff and it might get tricky when I have 20 large pieces bumping around um, because my style, you can't really, it's like a puzzle piece. Um, so that might be interesting storing it, but I've figured out archival ways to sort of build boxes around an unset mosaic, like, and, and sort of like uh, create it, if you will, like art creating. So if I'm not installing, I'll have, I mean, hundreds of hours of cutting. So I think that that would, would work. Um, if, if we had some crazy inclement weather for months, that would be problematic. But um, I, don't, I don't foresee that happening. But the cold, the cold is a variable for sure. Um, and I might just have to see how, see how, uh, <laughs> how climate change perhaps treats this, but... Uh, We've have it. It's it's very it's unseasonably warm now. Like I could set exterior mosaics now, but we'll just I guess play that out, and that's a very valid concern. Um, if that addressed your question. Um, hmm. So I'm a bit of a tech technological luddite. If I'm kind of stumbling through a little bit of this, I appreciate your guys uh your guys patience with everything. Um. Let's see. 
Uh, and I've made I've made large renditions of snow geese before, so I'm super excited to cut that. All of the little mosaic pieces I think will read really well. Um, I would potentially like to talk to a structural engineer because admittedly the material I use is probably a little bit heavier than the other two applicants. Mm -hmm. um, I know Kyle does a lot of like thin glass. Um, I'm not sure what, what he's planning on this, but I want to make sure that the, the wall can sustain a load. And I haven't crunched the number yet, but I have a friend who's a structural engineer that is going to help me make sure this, that this will fly. It should, it's a commercial building. Um, but that's one other little side consideration that I've been thinking about. Um, let's see. And I was just going to add too that we would uh, work with you or the, the finalists um, to get any necessary permits so that it's all, oh, great. you know, signed off on in terms of the structure and um, that's, great. yeah, that's kind of built into the process as well. So the, the finalists would be working with the facilities folks with the county um, to get any necessary building permits. So. Yeah, yeah it's maybe really it's that. maybe overthinking it, but you know my 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 materials are thicker and a little bit more tedious in that capacity. Um, let's see here, anything else? Let's check my notes. Um, yeah, are there any other questions about the the motif that I'm I'm kind of playing with here? Um, or the installation methods or techniques? Because I, I could expound forever about just tile work in general, but I'm not sure if that's quite necessary. Looks like uh, Debbie Jo, you have a question? Not a question, just a comment. Okay. I appreciate that, uh, that you're looking at scr uh, scratch resistant material, yes. because if it is on the wall, there uh, that particular pool is, is one of our busiest and people start lining up before mm. they start getting in there. So the more likely they would be leaning up against it, I believe that's my understanding. Unless right. it's a, unless there's another barrier um, there. It's and also, you know, consider. people kind of scribe their names into stuff sometimes. Right. Um, yeah, you cut up there a little bit. Yeah, porcelain. Porcelain is super dense. Like when I'm doing, um, what's the word? Like when I'm showing clients potential material for their flooring and and houses, you could like try to scratch it with a key and it won't really scratch. The stone is a little bit more temperamental. I predominantly use travertine just because it's it's easier to cut and it really reads nice. Um, actually, my mesas are gonna be various dark to light um, pieces of mo like monolithic slabs of travertine. Um, that is a little bit more scratchable, but if there was an issue at a later date, I could buff it out. Um, to an extent. Um, and yeah, I don't, I, I haven't, I, I talked about it a little bit on my proposal. I need to figure out, um, I know that with murals, I've done a few murals um, throughout the years that there's a coating you could put on to make it vandalism resistant. Um, the tile and grout, I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I don't foresee that happening, but it's something I'm definitely gonna talk to, uh, you know, chemists or maybe even the graffiti removal people or something, just to know that if that was to happen, we could cover our bases too. Um, let's see, what else? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome, thank you. Sorry, I adopted a cat and she kept me up all last night trying to like roost in my head. So uh, I didn't quite sleep very good last night. So I appreciate your guys' patience. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, any other questions? I could extrapolate a bit more about my design, if if not. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. And if any of the guests um, are have any questions, this would be the time to. Um, raise your hand and then I can unmute you if any of the, the folks that are guests versus panelists have any questions for Joel. Um, and let's see. 
All right. Great. Um, let's see. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Oh, wait. Uh, we do have a question from Bianca. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, hi, uh, Joel. My name is Bianca Encinas, and I'm one of the Bernalillo County Arts Board members for District Two. So, um, I was up late myself as well. Cut out. Let, let's give it a second. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Hi, my name is Bianca Encinas, and I'm with the Bernalillo County Arts Board for representing cool. District Two. Um, okay. I just wanted to say thank you for the presentation and oh, for really? all the work that you put into this. Um, awesome. I'm an, I'm an alumni of Harrison Middle School myself as well. So just wanted to Ooh, say, really? we're a little quiet. I'm a little quiet this morning. So long okay, night. That's well. great. <laughs> yeah, it's, thank um, you for your presentation. No, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I've already, um, just the, the professionalism I'm attempting to bring to this has taught me so much that, you know, it's already a win. I'm, I'm, I've learned a lot and I haven't really written this much since my college days. So it's kind of refreshing uh, parts of my brain, so. Yeah, yeah, um, and, and, and I think that's the goal of this, right? Is to sometimes when you're in, in these types of processes, it can be very intimidating. So that's why oh, yeah. I usually just like to say hi and thank you to kind of humanize this experience for everybody and understand that, you know, that we're regular people and, you know, that you just to feel welcome and comfortable. Cool, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I remember back in the day, the Harrison Park had this, uh, it was just just derelict. It, I just love how there's the library there, which I go to. Um, I haven't swam at the pool yet, but I think uh, regardless, I'm gonna have to now. Um, there's a skate park right there. It's really, it's, I'm proud of the South Valley. It's coming up like, um, I mean, I've lived on La Vega, lived right by Rio Grande High School. So I, I mean, that's my whole stomping ground. So even before I knew about this call, I would pass by the building on my way to work and be like, that's a really good space for some public art. And then the call happened. So I don't know, it's very serendipitous. Thank you, Bianca. Um, I had something else to add. Yeah, and, and I'm definitely open to any community suggestions for, for my motifs. One of my friends brought it to my attention that the kids on the burro might be insensitive. I don't, I, I, did, I don't know if that's true or not, but I'd like to get people's opinion on that, um, obviously. Um, being a white guy from the South Valley, I get a little bit of a pass, but like my Espanol is pretty bad. So I would definitely like to pick people's brains on anything like that um, as well, obviously. And um and yeah, I went kind of heavy on the on the animal motifs. I wanted to do a large cottonwood tree, but the scale of the wall, it just wouldn't have worked. So I kind of, I simplified my my concepts for this project for, for the sake of time and installation. But I, I think it's pretty strong. And regardless, I'm gonna cut some of these geese out and cranes out just to do, because I'm really eager to to play with those. Um, let's see, what else can I say? Stephanie, um, do you I'm, have a question or is that, um, seeing a hand up, I don't know if that's a new hand or? Yeah, um, it's in regard to the, um, to the comment he made about the children on the burro. I actually yeah. like the representation that you have there because it's of multiculturalism. So I oh, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't be afraid of, of, you know, what, what people might think think of it. I just, I actually appreciate it. Um, I'm actually the former um, community school coordinator for Harrison Middle School, and we do have such a diverse population within oh, that no area. Oh, cool. And so, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I cool. actually love that portion of it. I love the cranes that you have in there, the roadrunner cool. that's there. Um, I, I, I love the whole concept of it. It's obvious that, you know, you have spent some time in the South Valley and you, totally. and you, you know the culture there, yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, I've learned a lot. I mean, I moved to Denver briefly for about 10 years and I came back and I was like, I'm, I'm living in the South Valley. And it's interesting too, I discussed how like, um, I've remodeled numerous houses in the South Valley and it's this slippery slope of, we want things to progress. We want money and new stuff to come down there, but we wanna preserve the familias that have been there forever. So it's a slippery slope with construction. Art's, art's different. 
but um, I think this will be fun and engaging. And like, if I make the kids, you know, if I fabricate them wearing swimming trunks and goggles, I might even have the burrow wear goggles. I think that'd be funny, you know, without being overtly goofy. You know, I think that would that would make me giggle, at least. Um, so Joel, it looks like we have uh, Rihanna has a question as well. Okay. The only I, other thing I would do, hi, is um, maybe a girl on the burrow with them. So rather than all being all guys. Oh, um, brilliant. Yeah. I mean, the last child could be that's, um, fully clothed. That's fine. But yeah, it's just, you know, we have girls here. No, <laughs> no that, that makes perfect sense. Um, I tend to overthink and underthink things as a, uh, I think that's just how I operate, but that, that makes perfect sense. And honestly, it'd be kind of a cool, um, I could make cool mosaic wavy hair or something like kind of coming down and shaping, you know? Yeah. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sold on my, my little serpenty idea. If I do get this, I might play with, the splash pad more i did have a concern about kids are going to be sitting on it and jumping on it um none of my edges will be sharp obviously but certain tiles especially darker colors they retain heat so it might be like hot to the touch so on the splash pad little part that's definitely something that we all should consider and i'll, I'll obviously do the legwork on that but if it's you know really hot to the touch um I've installed a giant slate in a lady's backyard about 10 years ago, and it, it was physically impossible to touch due to the, the sun and the way the stones absorb the heat. So that, that's putting the cart in front of the horse, so to speak. But that's, you know, I'm trying to cover all my bases with all this. Um, I think, yeah, I, I need to obviously figure out what I'm cutting on site. And I am going to try to null, not nullify, but cutting tiles loud, you know, um, that's one caveat with my particular style of mosaic that I'm going to have to figure out. But I, uh, I don't know, I feel all right about that as a challenge as well. Um, and yeah, I don't know, it's a cool opportunity. I'm just happy. Like I said, I already won just learning from all you guys and uh, having the confidence to approach public art more professionally because um i've been a contractor for 20 plus years and the irony of that is i'm actually really good at what i'm doing and my body is starting to fail me it's paradoxical so i'm hoping that this will be a springboard to just doing more art and less construction um however the one advantage i feel like i have over um other people i've done murals and tile with is i do have a strong foundational background in construction. So sometimes the they inform one another with my sculptural and my stone and mosaic work. Um, so there, there's crossover there. And I'm, I'm actually very proud of finding like a harmony between those two modalities because there's a lot of like, you know, oh, dumb construction worker, you know, or craftsperson. There's all these things. I don't have those distinctions. I, I find a guy stuccoing a house to be art. I find, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I think I have a good, well-rounded understanding of craft and fine art, and I'm melding the two. That's kind of my, my real end goal, honestly. Um, yeah. Great, thank you so much, Joel. Um, let's see, just checking to see if anyone might have any questions, additional questions. Um, we have about 10 minutes before okay. the next presenter. So, um, oh, wow, cool. See. I'll see. Stephanie, you had a question. She's got a busy morning. Um, just one other I think comment. There's much maybe. else I need to add. I mean, I could bore you with the. Yeah, we do. Uh, <laughs> Stephanie and then Abe with questions. Okay. Excellent. Just one other question. Um, what, what was your concept behind the snake? <laughs> you know, um, 
my friend Thomas Christopher Haig has a mural of a snake going over, um, I think that's the Le the coal bridge. Mm -hmm. And um, his is more whimsical. I think I was initially just gonna do a bunch of plants, but that seemed tedious and not fun. I kind of want it to be more fun. So, you know, to be quite honest, there wasn't much narrative behind that decision, but um, I was like, how can I extrapolate this very long linear shape? What can I do with that that's fun? Um, it might, I might end up just doing a cool tech, a cool textured design, but something about the snake, I was like, I've always wanted to tile a snake and from close up, it would just look like a pattern, but then you'd see the head and the tail. Um, it, yeah, it might... borders on being a weird thing at a pool, honestly, mm -hmm. but, um, it's more of a design. Um, and, and I, I might give more thought to that if we proceed just to freak it up a little bit, but. Um, My only concern is because um, speaking for Native American um, culture, I myself am Pueblo. Um, cool. My partner is Navajo and the connotation in Navajo beliefs is that a snake is a bringer of evil spirits. And so that's my only connotation is, you know, if we do yeah. have any Navajo um, people coming to the South Valley, which we may, you know, I don't know the whole connotation behind Isleta people and the Tewa people of snakes. Some people, uh, some tribes view it as healing, some as fertility, and some as, um, you know, other connotations. And I, so that's I, why, you know, that would be my only mm. comment to like possibly worry about. Yeah. Uh <laughs> I, I didn't think about that. I, I could have asked, actually, one of my best friends is, is Pueblo. I could ask him that, but, you know, you run out of time. But, um, yeah, I'm not married to that as a, as a, I have no ego behind changing that up. Because um, that, and a snake, it's a weird thing, because there's snake medicine. It is wisdom. Uh, some of my friends, I'm a friend from Chechnya. It's a bad thing. So um, I'm not married to that as a concept, honestly, you know. Um, but I, something playful. I think honestly, it was just more of a secondary idea because I like did a crash course on learning Photoshop again. So um, yeah, that, that's maybe a weak answer, but, uh, but yeah, that's to be considered for sure. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie and Joel and Abe, you have a question. Hi, Abe. Hi, um, am I coming through? Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, listen, one of the thoughts I had from the beginning, and I too am, and, and thank you, your fellow alumni there from Rio. I'm, I'm also a Rio grad. Oh, cool. Uh, Ernie Powell, Kip Carson area. Yeah. But uh, listen, one of my thoughts, man, and I love, I don't want to insult the integrity of you. have a beautiful thought in this. It's obvious you applied some thought uh -huh. to this, uh, to this uh, presentation. And I love the, the, the actual picture and the theme of it. One of my original things, and, and I don't know that it's going to come through and it's not going to deter or determine my vote in any way. I'm going to vote for the best project. But I had always thought- cut out. I'm sorry, am I here? Yeah, yeah, you just am cut I... out momentarily. Okay, one of my original concepts was to personalize this because very rarely do the kids of the Valley, and I've been one of them for, Jesus, I'm 64 years old. I've been one of them since we had to cross the river to swim in Barrelas, you know, by the yep. zoo. Wow, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm old school, man. Uh, listen, one of the things that I always wanted to do was incorporate a welcome or a pride setting. Sometimes a few words go a very long way mm -hmm. with uh, somebody that may not ever have gotten a, a true pat on the back. Uh, and I always wanted to incorporate something like welcome to the South Valley or we love our South Valley something like yeah. that. Uh, it doesn't have to be dominant and again, if it didn't, if it entails changing the integrity of the of the of the the mosaic i totally understand but that's one thing that i have mentioned literally every meeting that we've had wow. i wanted yeah. to personalize it uh that's okay i got your mind i can see you right now you just rubbed your your beard and i said okay i got his mind going so <laughs> give it some thought yeah. uh and that's all i ask uh because of something that's could come like a few words go a long way, especially for kids that have never had a super strong voice in society. And for us to have the opportunity to welcome, because that splash park is going to be drawing people from all over the city. True. It's going to be, 
is just an outstanding. And you're right about that, uh, that skate park and the mural in the back and the splash park. And it's just, you know, I mean, the thing is awesome. Um, that's all I wanted to mention that I had given it that thought. And I thought I'd mention it one more time. Yeah. Um, you cut out there for a second, Abe. I, I think that's, I think that's, no, I think that's great. And I have a lot of friends who are from the South Valley who do lettering and have like, they've taken graffiti to like a, a professional level um, of lettering. I could easily do like some letters in, in the upper echelon of the, of the sides of the sky or something. Um, that, that, those were my thoughts, that brown section, but brilliant. I like your upper left off. Upper left on the second uh, mosaic to the right. Yeah, boom. just something humble and sweet. Welcome to the South Valley. Just something like that, or we that's love cool. our South Valley. Okay, I'm man? totally open to that. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and the lettering could be simple or stylized, and it wouldn't disrupt the piece. It could just be a background. Yeah, um, I remember swimming in the Rio Grande River too. Like the fact that this is here is awesome. <laughs> the irrigation canals bring a memory back <laughs> oh dude uh oh, be, being chased on those ditches uh oh, know, having man. fun on those ditches <laughs> yeah that's cool thank you abe that's brilliant okay you're welcome um, thank you that i'm i'm very open to i'm open to any any uh ideas honestly this is the first piece of this scale i've done so i definitely want people to find it whimsical funny grounding calming and with words it could be welcoming so that's yeah i'll i'll try to incorporate that that's cool all right great thank you so much abe and joel and uh, we've got about four minutes before our next scheduled presentation i think we probably have time for just one more question okay so if anyone <laughs> has additional questions for Joel, go ahead and raise your hand. And let's see, I'm scanning my screen for any hands raised. All right, um, yeah, I do not see any other questions popping up. Um, so with that said, we'd like to thank Joel for your time this morning, a uh, round of virtual and real applause. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Joel.